And then bringing the hands to the shins, take a halfway lift, lengthening the spine forwards. As you exhale, soften back into the legs, fingers find the ground, step the right leg back and place the knee to the floor. Keep the fingertips down, just press into them so the chest looks forwards. And again, just pausing here for a couple of breaths, moving into it subtly, if it feels good to you. A little bit of swaying of the hips or the head or the breath. And then rooting the hands into the floor, step back into a plank position. Pausing here for a couple of breaths, pressing lightly into the heels, engaging through the thighs. So like we did when you were standing, Find that space and length through the whole of the legs, the whole of the spine, right through to the crown of the head. And see if you can broaden any more space between the shoulder blades. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, bring the knees to the floor and the chest to the ground, a half chaturanga, elbows brush against the rib cage. Inhale, slide forwards and open through a cobra, reaching the space still between the toes to the crown. And exhale, come back up through all fours, tuck the toes and find your downward facing dog. Again, we'll pause here for a few breaths. So feel free to paddle the feet, swing the hips side to side. Take as much movement into this first one as you want to, particularly on a Monday morning, just moving intuitively, whatever feels good in the body. Take a really deep breath. From here, we're going to step the left foot through to between the hands, finding that same low lunge, the back knee to the floor again, pressing into the fingertips, chest forwards. Take one more deep breath in where you are. And as you exhale, stepping the back foot to the top of the mat, finding forward fold. Take a halfway lift as you breathe in. And exhale, soften into the legs. Come all the way to standing, rolling the arms around and up as you rise. And as you exhale, come back into your forward fold, fingertips find the ground. Take a halfway lift as you breathe in. Exhale, steps the left leg back behind you, place the knee to the floor and we pause here. Keep the fingertips to the ground, just pressing into them so the chest looks forwards, softening the pelvis towards the front heel. So I think you're trying to connect the right buttock towards that front foot. Any subtle movement of the hips or the head, whatever feels good, just softening into your body. Take one more deep breath in. And as you exhale, step yourself back into plank. Again, pausing here for a couple of breaths, just feeling in for the strength and the space of your body. Strong through the legs, drawing up the lower abdominals. Create a bit more space around the chest, the neck. Take a really deep breath in. As you exhale, knees and chest to the ground again, elbows brushing against the ribs. Inhale, sliding forwards and open to cobra. And use one long exhale to come all the way back to your downward facing dog. Take four deep breaths with me this time. So take a long inhale. Full exhale, spread the palms, wrap the shoulder blades. Deep inhale two. Full exhale, relaxing the neck. Inhaling three. Exhale. Inhaling four. Exhale. So we step the right leg back through to between the hands, finding that same low lunge, back knee softens to the floor again. Just taking one breath to lift the chest. And as you exhale, step the back foot to the top of the mat. Halfway lift as you breathe in, lengthening the spine. Exhale, softens you back to the legs. Inhale, coming all the way to standing, arms around and up, pressing the palms lightly together at the top, reaching up through the fingertips, down through the tailbone. And then just have a sense of the chest tipping a little further up to the ceiling. So you create that gentle feeling of back bending. Take one more deep breath in where you are. 
And as you exhale, come back into your fold. We'll take another round of sun salutations. Get warm. So halfway lift, breathe in. Exhale, step the right leg back, knee to the ground. We'll just take one breath. This time the arms are going to lift up to the ceiling. So bring the arms around and up. Good. Exhale brings you back into plank. We take one breath at plank. Deep breath in. Exhale, forwards and down, half or full chaturanga. Inhale, brings you forwards and open cobra or upward facing dog. And exhale, takes you all the way back to your downward facing dog. Three deep breaths. Inhale, one. Exhale, spread the palms, spread the shoulder blades. Inhale, two. Exhale, relaxes the neck and lifts the tailbone. Inhale, three. Exhale, bring the gaze to the hands, stepping the left foot through to between the hands and back knee to the floor. One breath to lift the arms around and up. And the exhale brings you to forward fold at the top of the mat, so hooking the back foot in. Good, halfway lift, lengthens the spine and exhale, soften into the legs. Left leg steps straight back, place the knee to the floor. One breath to lift the arms and exhale brings you to plank, pausing at plank, breathing in. Exhale, taking your chaturanga, half or full. Inhale, lift the chest up and exhale to downward dog. Again, three deep breaths, inhale for one, Exhale, inhaling for two, exhale, inhaling three, exhale, gaze to the hands, your right foot is going to step forwards, place the back knee to the floor, one breath to lift the arms up, and exhale, come to forward fold at the top of the mats. Halfway lift as you breathe in, lengthening. And exhale, soften into the legs. Inhale as you rise, reaching all the way up. And this time, just bring the hands back down through to the heart center. Good, just taking a couple of breaths, feeling any warmth or circulation. Let's move through the body, noticing your prana, your energy, your vital life force. Then interlace your fingers together, press the palms up to the ceiling, reaching up as high as you can press. Keep reaching. If your palms are reaching up, soften the tailbone down. So just take out any sensation of back bending through your spine, that the core still feels strong. If you want to, then see if we can lift up onto the tiptoes, finding a little bit of balance. If focus your drishti, your gaze spots, engaging up through the thighs, have a sense of pushing down through the balls of the feet so that you lift away from them. If you're feeling steady and feeling brave, try closing your eyes. See if you can still stay balanced. <laughs> Suddenly our brain feels drunk when you close your eyes. And then slowly soften the heels back to the floor before we fall over. Good, and then lean your torso over towards your right. So we open out through the left side of torso. Allow your hips to press out towards the left. So you really extend into that space of the body. And again, keep the core feeling strong so there's no back bending while you're leaning in. So tailbone is dropping down. We keep the space in that lumbar spine. Take a couple more breaths where you are. Gently bring yourself back tall again. And then just let the arms soften down to your sides. You're gonna step your left leg back behind you. Coming into um, a trikonasana stance of the legs, so drop the back heel, open the arms, and then hinging forwards and down to trikonasana. So your front leg is straight. Good. Couple more breaths. So each limb is working as actively as the other. So if thighs are pulling up, arms are strong. If you're leaning into the underneath shin, just see if that hand can lighten so the core works a little bit more. Good. Let's say bring the left arm, um, your floating arm, just forward slightly. So the palm is facing the same way as your gaze. So keep it reaching up. That's it, up to the ceiling. That's it, perfect, good. 
From here, we're going to come into pyramid. So hands either side of your front foot. And you can just rotate your back foot round so all the toes are tracking towards the top of the mat and the back heel is rooting in towards the floor. So we're aiming for two straight legs, but we do want the hands to stay grounded either to floor or blocks. So if there needs to be a little bend in that front knee, then absolutely let that be so. And then just softening the upper body down this front leg. So we're just deepening through the right hamstring. If there's room to deepen into it, perhaps you can just nudge your right sit bone back a little further. And if you want to, maybe flexing the front foot so we hit more into the calf and the foot's getting the stretch there too. And then unscrunch your eyebrows. <laughs> I can hear them scrunching and everybody. <laughs> Relax the neck, take a really deep breath. Good, softening that foot back to the ground if it's flexed. Take a bend into the knee. We're gonna come into warrior one from here. So arms lifting to the ceiling, pressing the palms together. One thumb hooks in front of the other. Just have a little bit of connection into the hands. And you can adjust the legs if you wanna take them a little bit longer or broader. Just feeling in for the pose. So the hips and shoulders are aiming to be facing fronts. The tailbone still softening down. So you should feel a bit of space opening around the front of the left hip. The rib cage dropping down and just soften around the shoulders and neck, deepen into the breath, rooting through the heels of the feet so the toes are light. Take a deep breath. From here, we're going to interlace the hands together behind your lower back, reaching the knuckles towards your back heel so the shoulder blades squeeze together, opening the chest. You might just want to open your front foot out a little wider to the edge of the mat. So we're going to come to humble warrior from here. So your exhale brings the chest forwards and down. So the gaze drops either to your front big toe or if you're a little bit deeper into the pose, take the gaze to your back big toes, the back of the neck lengthens. Allow the thighs and the legs to really support you here. So root down through those heels. Maybe you can get a little bit deeper into this front leg. See if the knuckles and the shoulders can lift up a little bit higher so the back of the neck can soften. And then deepen into your breath. See where the breath can take you. Really good. So staying low, just gently release the hands. Your left hand is gonna stay down. Right arm is lifting up to the ceiling into a twisting lunge. So let your back heel lift off as well. And again, you can just adjust the legs so you sink into the pose. Noticing just finding your sort of existence in each pose. Noticing if the gaze feels good to lift or keeping the neck soft. I don't mind, I don't feel there's ever really a right and wrong with these slight adjustments. I'd rather the pose work for your body rather than you try and make your body work for the pose getting these things the right way around. Just taking another breath here in this rotation. And then Jenny bringing this right hand down to the floor. We come to half monkey next. So back knee softens to the ground and lengthen that front leg. So again, you can wriggle it into place if it helps. The hands stay on the ground. So just bring them to wherever they support you. Flexing the front foot again. So the toes curl back. And have a sense of your tailbone trying to reach towards the back of the mat and the forehead softening down towards the shins. So again, we get nice and deep into the lengthening of this hamstring. Breathing with it. Now just take your gaze forward so the spine feels long. Engage your core, so belly button pulls up to the spine. Flatten the front foot to the ground for a bit of support and bring your hands to your chest. So the hands are no longer supporting you. Bring your torso up straight, good. And then you're gonna turn to face the long edge of the mat. So again, you can let the legs just adjust with you. Your back shin can turn, the front foot turns. So you're keeping your right leg long. So we're coming into gate pose. So your right hand is gonna rest to the leg. Left hands lift up to the ceiling take a breath in and as you exhale lean down that right leg so the right leg stays nice and straight turn the right toes to face the way that your face is facing <laughs> that makes sense yeah good so the outer edges of the foot is parallel with the mat great 
So really, again, we're opening into this left side body. So work through into that as much space as we can feel. It's a deepening. So your floating arm is almost reaching you deeper into it. Take one more breath. And then we're lifting yourself back up straight. Your left hand comes to the floor. So we come into a supported side plank or right arm coming overhead. Now you can either stay here with the underneath knee on the ground or step the underneath leg out. So you're in a full side plank if you want to. You can stay exactly as you are if that feels enough. And if you're feeling strong, you can play around with your side plank variations. Maybe your top leg can come into tree or just floating it. Yeah, play around if you want to. Take a deep breath in, great. As you exhale, come into your full plank position. Take a deep breath in here. And as you exhale, come through your chaturanga, half or full. Inhale, lift the chest, cobra or up dog. And exhale, come back into your downward facing dog. Good. Couple of deep breaths. So just feeling in for, again, the space through the hands, the shoulder blades the breath bring the gaze to your hands stepping or jumping find the now the top edge of your mat which is the back edge of the mat good from here bring the big toes together we're going to come into chair pose so deep bend in the knees lifting the hands the so deep bend in the knees good sit bones sinking fingertips reaching high Couple of deep breaths, pressing the palms together. Again, if you prefer to, you can hook one thumb in front of the other. See so if you just hold on to the hands. Whenever you exhale, press yourself up straight through the legs, hands to your heart center. Your right leg is going to come into tree pose. So bring the sole of the foot either to the calf muscle or to the inner thigh. Good, nice. And again, you can play around with variations. Maybe the arms lift to the ceiling or they stay at your chest or up to your sides. Good, from here, your left hand is gonna hold onto your waist or your hip. Your right hand is gonna hold onto the foot. So you can grab hold of the big toe and lift that knee up to the outer shoulder. We send the heel forward, so extended hand to toe pose. It doesn't matter if a floating leg doesn't straighten. Focus on your supporting leg, staying nice and tall. Then if the floating leg straightens, then wonderful. It doesn't matter if it doesn't. From here, re-bend this right leg. Switch your hands so your left hand is holding the shoelace bit of the foot and the outer edge. Keep the foot parallel, the knee facing the ceiling. Your right arm lifts up to the ceiling. You're coming into a twist. So as that heel reaches forwards, again, as far forwards as balance permits us, and the right hand reaches back. It's a horrendously difficult balance. It took me years to find balance in this pose. So you want the sole of your foot to be facing the way that you're pressing out. Right forwards. Good. Really nice. Take another breath. And from here, we're gonna come into eagle. So your floating leg is gonna wrap over your supporting one. So take a bend into both knees. You can let go of the foot. Your eagle wrap of the arms, we're just gonna turn to the camera slightly. So your right arm is gonna wrap over the left. You bring the back of the hands towards each other and maybe wrap them again. If it feels too complicated with the arms as well, then just hold on to alternate shoulders. Good. So your floating leg, bring the inner thighs to squeeze together like you're sitting cross legs on a chair and your floating toes can either be on the floor, off the floor or wrapped behind the calf muscle. Reach your elbows forwards and up. Take another breath. Good. From here, we come into warrior three. So you're going to unravel the arms, send that right leg still floating back behind you and reach the hands back towards that floating foot. So we draw the shoulder blades together, engaging the strength through your back, scooping up through the abdomen. Take a deep breath, just holding one more breath. And as you exhale, soften down into your forward fold. Now the hands hold on to the ankles or the calf muscles, so you deepen yourself in, lifting the shoulders, 
softening the neck, deepen into the breath. Now gently rolling yourself all the way up to standing, bring the hands around and up above your head, interlace the fingers, press the palms up to the ceiling, softening the tailbone down, so nice and strong and tall through the core. And from here, hinging your body over to your left. So this time we open out the right side line of the body. Let the hips press out to the side. Engage the core. Ribs are tucking in. Taking a couple of deep breaths. Let yourself reach over as far as the body feels good to go. Bring yourself back up straight. So you're gonna step your right leg back behind you and turn the torso. We're coming into Trikonasana, so you hinge back over to your left again, separate the arms. So your left hand comes down to your left shin and the right hand is reaching up to the ceiling. Good, that's it, straightening both legs, perfect. Pulling up the thighs and arms are nice and engaged. So again, Leslie, bring that top arm just forward slightly to the Shoulders in your back a little more. Good, and see if you can lengthen through the underneath side of your torso. So reach out the rib cage away from the pelvis a little further. Take a really deep breath. From here, we come through to pyramid. So both hands come down either side of your front foot, your left foot, and turn the back foot in slightly. So all the toes are facing um, towards your fingers, softening the forehead in towards your shin. So again, we're aiming for two straight legs, but if it helps just have that little bend in the front knee, then absolutely let that come through. And perhaps then we flex the front foot. So we get nice and juicy into this hamstring and calf. And again, if that's deepened into some intensity, just let the breath soften around it, soften through the upper body. Let go of anything you don't really need. Flattening through the front foot. So come into warrior one. So deepen the bend in the front knee, lifting the hands up to the ceiling. Good, hips and shoulders are aiming to face front. So again, you can adjust the legs so you find a bit of space around the front of your right hip. Sinking into that left knee. Again, maybe gaze is lifting or gaze is forwards. Deepen into the breath, root through the heels of the feet so the toes are light. Interlacing your hands together behind the lower back. And maybe you do one finger differently this time so it feels like the odd way to link them. Reach the knuckles towards your back foot so you feel the chest space open. And as we prepare for humble warrior, you might wanna take your front foot just an inch wider. So your body can then come forwards and down to the inside of your front leg. Hands lifting up to the ceiling, shoulder blades squeezing together, sinking deeply into the legs, root through the heels, feel the strength of the body. Nice and strong through that breath. Can you still keep that ujjayi sound rolling through your breath? So we stay low in the posture. Just bring the hands towards the ground. Your right hand is gonna stay rooted. Left hand reaches up to the ceiling. We come into twist. So let your back heel lift off the ground to the tiptoes. And rooting through that front foot to stabilize you. Maybe gaze is lifting or gaze is soft. Deepen into the breath. Bring the floating hand to the floor. We come through to half monkey. So back knee to the ground and lengthen the front leg again. Bring the hands back just under the shoulders, maybe flexing the front foot so you can just wriggle it into placements. And either folding into your front leg or keeping the chest reaching forwards, wherever gives you the kind of better feeling of stretch and space. Taking one more breath. 
and then rooting down through the left foot from here we come back into that gate pose so you can turn the shin turn the foot and lift the hands up to the ceiling and then your left hand rests onto the length of left leg and your right arm reaches you down it so again we open through this right side of the torso that's it Alison keep going over towards that side good it can give you crampy hip relax the glutes yeah Lift the torso back up straight, bring the right palm to your mat. So we come into a supported side plank. So left arm is going to reach overhead, bicep to ear. Good. And either you keep the underneath shin to the ground, or if you want to build into it, then you come into your full side plank. Maybe your left leg comes into a tree pose, resting into the supporting one. Take any variations you want to play with. Nice and strong through the side body. Really good. Take a deep breath in. Nice, Julie. Exhale brings you to plank position. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Take your chaturanga. We come through a vinyasa. So let it flow with your breath. We come back into downward dog. Pausing. Take a deeper breath. You can keep it moving or in stillness. And bring the gaze to your hands, bend the knees, jumping the feet up to the hands. Good. Take a halfway lift as you breathe in and exhale, deepen into the legs. The big toes are touching. Take a deep bend in the knees, come to chair pose, arms lifting, palms either together or shoulder distance to soften the shoulders. Again, play around with where feels good in the body in the pose. Find length and strength through the torso, so ribs hugging in, tailbone reaching to the floor as the fingertips are reaching up. And gently come to standing straight through the legs, hands to the heart center. Your left leg is gonna come through to tree pose. So hooking it in either to inner thigh or calf muscle or toes can be on the floor if you're feeling wibbly wobbly. Good. And again, keep that stretch through the spine. So the tailbone is reaching down, the lower abdomen is keeping you tall. If you want to lift the hands or separate them or waft them around, whatever feels good. Take another breath. From here, we come to extended hand to toes. Your right hand is just gonna hold onto your waist. Your left hand, maybe peace fingers, pick up the big toe. Now start with the knee facing the ceiling, the heel facing the floor. So the leg is parallel. Then you start to extend it forwards if the supporting leg is straight. So focus on supporting side strong first. And let's see if you can just nudge that left shoulder into your back a little so the, the back stays straight. Good. So re-bend this floating leg nice and deeply to your chest, switch the hands. So your right hand is holding shoelace foot of the foot. The left hand is gonna lift up and sweep back behind you. So it rotates the shoulders as you press the heel forwards. And again, the leg doesn't have to straighten. See where we get to. See if you can press the sole of the foot in front. If the foot's going across to the side, it's gonna throw you off balance. So let's see, push your sole of the foot towards the screen, towards me. Try the sole of the foot, not the side of the foot. That's it, yeah, great. Good, yes, Julie, you can hold under the knee if that feels better. Good, nice, so from here we come to eagle. So wrapping your floating leg over the supporting one, bend both knees nice and deeply. So let your supporting legs in a, in a chair pose and then squeeze inner thigh in. Your left arm is going over the right, wrapping them around. Elbows are reaching forwards and up. So your wrapped leg, either the toes are floating or toes to the floor or toes wrapped, you decide. Reaching space between the shoulder blades, soften through the neck, finding the focus. Lovely, from here into Virabhadrasana three, warrior three. So take your floating leg, your left leg back behind you. The fingers are reaching towards the back heel. Stay active again through each limb. So the limbs respond with the core that's drawing up and the breath. And slowly coming into forward fold, foot down and soften over the legs. 
well done. End of sequence one. Take a halfway lift as you breathe in. Exhale, fold into the legs. Take a deep bend in the knees. Come back to your chair pose again. Hands pressing together or apart, whatever feels good, but reaching the distance between your fingertips and your sit bones. So there's a two-way energy line running through the upper body. Take a full breath. And as you exhale, bring the hands to the floor. Keep the deep bend in the knees. So palms come flat to the ground. Now lift up onto your tiptoes. Keep the palms flat to the ground. So the knees are hugging into your chest. And then separate the knees and tap the knees into the upper arms as though knees are coming into armpits. If you want to, taking Bakasana, your crow pose, then see if the toes can float up. You squeeze the heels up towards your bum. If you want to keep the tiptoes to the ground, then that's absolutely fine. But just see if you can transfer some of the weight into the hands a little bit more. Just become a little bit braver. We're taking a weight forwards. Gaze is slightly forwards. Very good. Nice, Julie. It's coming. From here, come into your squat again. The toes come to the ground if they're floating. And just step the legs back so you come into an all fours position. Take a few cat cow rolls through the spine with focus into the back bend. So you're inhaling as the chest and tailbone lift and exhale to press the spine to ceiling. Good. From here, bring yourself back into a higher kneeling position. So stay on the shins, just lifting yourself up. And bring the hands around to the lower back, so the back of the pelvis. If you use your thumbs, just to kind of feel in for that ridge line of your pelvis, the iliac crest of your pelvis, wrap the palms kind of into that space. It's right just underneath your waist. And then draw the shoulders down your back and squeeze the elbows and shoulder blades towards each other. So the front of the chest feels open. And then sink the hips forwards, activate through buttocks. So they're pressing the hips out. And imagine there's a thread against your breastbone that's lifting up to the ceiling. So we're not thinking about dropping back. We're thinking about extending through the front of the body. It doesn't have to go too far. You can keep the head wherever neck feels comfortable. Good. Hug the hands in as close as you can around that sort of lower part of the back. And gently, whenever you exhale, pull the core in to lift you back up straight. Good, now tuck the toes underneath so the heels are just slightly higher. Lift the hands up to the ceiling. And as you exhale, rotate round towards either long side of your mat, so maybe the way that you can easily kind of see me, and separate the hands so your arms are reaching out to the sides. Now the hand that's behind you is gonna drop down to your heels. So you can just rest the hand onto the foot there. And then lifting the other arm up to the ceiling. So you're in a twisted back bend. And if it's more comfortable, you keep the hips back towards your feet. If you want to take it more into back bend, then you press the hips forwards again, like we just did in that camel pose that we just took. Take one more deep breath where you are. And as you exhale, abdominals pull in to lift you back up, lift both arms to the ceiling and square yourself up again. Good, now twisting round to the other side and sweep the arms wide and let your back hand find the back foot and the other arm reach up to the ceiling. And again, you take it as soft or as deep into the spine as feels good, where you can still take a deep breath and use an exhale to bring yourself back up straight, strong through the core as you lift. Good, lifting both arms up to the ceiling. And exhale, bringing both hands down to the floor. We take a twist. So your right arm is going to lift up to the ceiling. And exhale, threading it all the way underneath you. Let your shoulder and temple rest into the ground. Just let yourself flop to the floor. Your left palm that you're now looking at is either staying, pressing into the ground, or maybe it can wrap around your lower back if you want to keep it kind of spiraling. Wherever you stay, just take it one more deep breath. and unravel the left arm if it's wrapped. Press yourself back up to all fours. And we just switch sides with that. So left arm sweeps high and exhale, threads underneath. Resting shoulder and temple to the floor. 
And again, right hand can either stay lightly pressing into the ground or it wraps behind the lower back. Take one more deep breath. Slowly unraveling, hand comes back to the ground. If it's wrapped, come into all fours and fold back towards the child's pose. So hips back to the heels, reach out through the arms. So we're staying fairly active in it, press into the fingertips, lift the palms, the wrists and the elbows, but feel like the forehead is softening into the ground. Third eye towards the earth. Take a deep breath. Come forwards into all fours again. Tuck the toes and find your downward facing dog. Lifting up. Take two more deep breaths here at Down Dog. Feel the shoulders move away from your ears towards that iliac crest of the pelvis again. Now lift your left foot away from the floor. So you're in a three leg dog, stretching it high and stretching it away from the torso. So again, making sure all limbs feel really active and really long. Take another deep breath. And then bringing this leg through to pigeon. So it's gonna come underneath and the knee rests down behind your left wrist. Good, if you want to pad out your right thigh, if you have any blocks or anything, then you're welcome to. We're just staying upright on the hands anyway, so keep the chest lifting. Maybe your back leg can just nudge a little bit further away from you. Good, pressing lightly into the fingertips so the chest stays lifted, but you can still stay um, softer in the spine if the hands come further forwards. So again, just making it kind of work for you. Good. Couple more breaths. So from here, you're gonna sink yourself onto your left thigh. I'm just gonna spin myself around so you can see this and you're gonna to turn towards a half straddle. So keep turning so you sit down and your left heel stays tucking in towards the groin. Your right leg stays reaching out. That's it, good. So your right hand is gonna rest onto your bent leg. Left hand lifts up to the ceiling, take a full breath in. And as you exhale, lean over towards your side. So we're opening through that left side of the torso. Good, now that you stay floating, if the hand finds the toes and take hold of the toes, that deepen you in. If that seems like an impossible human movement, then don't worry about that. One more full breath. And then let your floating hand just find the ground next to the outstretched leg. Turn yourself into the right leg. So you can just nudge the pelvis round so you feel a bit more square to it. And then lengthening down. So you're in Janu Shashasana A, lengthening down this front leg. Hands can either be to the floor or under calf muscle or wrapping around the extended foot. And just soften away any sense of struggle from the pose. These forward folds often create a little bit of tension around the shoulders or force from the abdomen. It doesn't really matter where you end up, just feeling in for space, feeling in for your breath. And gently pick the spine back up straight and your right extended leg is then gonna bend in and hook over the underneath one. So we're working towards Gomakasana, your knee pile. If it's more comfortable, you keep the foot flat to the ground. If you can deepen in, then you tuck the foot towards the hip a little further. If that still feels uncomfortable, then just take a cross leg with your right leg in front. Get as level as we can through the sit bones. If you want to just kind of remove the flesh from underneath the sit bones, it helps you get a bit more steady. And adding the arms in too. So your left arm is going to lift up to the ceiling and drop down the back. Your right arm wraps behind. And that can be just either holding onto the lower back or the fingertips interlace. You're still getting rotation through the shoulders wherever your arms kind of end up. So it's still good. Nice, and then nice and tall through the spine. Soften out where you can. Again, just focusing on that space through the neck. Focusing into the breath. 
If there's room to deepen, then you hinge forward. So the breastbone is leaning towards the front knee. That brings a bit of intensity through the body. Soften your eyebrows, deepen the breath. Maybe take a sigh if it feels good to <sighs> let it go. Gently pick your spine back up straight and untangle the arms. Bring the hands down to the top edge of your mat and we're going to step back into your downward dog. So we take that sequence to the other side. So stepping it back, give the legs a paddle or the hips a sweep side to side as we ease it out. So from here, your right leg is going to lift up to the ceiling and just pausing here at this furry leg dog, reaching the toes high, trying to extend out through that floating leg. So it feels really active. Same with the supporting leg. Try and be nice and straight through that supporting knee too. Great. Push the floor away. Take one more deep breath in. Awesome. As you exhale, bring that floating leg through to pigeon. So knee is now behind the right wrist and send the back leg further away. Again, we're going to stay upright in the chest. So fingertips stay to the floor, but they can be tucked in for a deeper arch or forwards for a softer arch or somewhere in between. Feel into it, soften the shoulders, take a deeper couple of breaths. And then let yourself sit into the right thigh. As we're gonna turn through to that half straddle. So your left leg stays long, just sit into face the long edge of the mat. Good. Your uh, left hand rests into the bent leg. Your right hand lifts up to the ceiling. Right hand lifting up. You're gonna lean over towards your left. So hinging over, good. Make sure you're sitting down into that left sit bones. If it helps, bring your straightened leg further forwards. Your left leg further forwards might help you sit down into it. Yeah, great. So just take a couple more deep breaths. And gently from here, bring the hands down either side of your straight leg. And this is where we just nudge the pelvis round. So you square up to your front foot a little. That's it. And then you're lengthening down the straight leg and hands can either be to the floor, under the calf or around the foot. So let yourself soften in. So we just turn into it a little bit more. That's it, good. One more deep breath here. And gently bring your spine up straight. So now your left leg is going to hook over the right leg. We can work into that knee pile or gomakasana. So the foot can either stay flat to the ground or you tuck it further in. So the knees are stacked one on top of the other. Good. Nice and tall through your spine. Your right arm lifts up to the ceiling and drop that down the back of the neck. Your left hand wraps around behind you. Again, one side often feels incredibly different to the other, which is okay. So good. Think about your top elbow trying to point up towards the ceiling. If there's room to deepen, then you hinge forwards. If it feels enough just to keep the spine straight and just keeping that integrity of the alignment and stay with that. Use the breath to soften into it and deepen into it. See what happens if you just sigh out the breath. Gently lift the spine back up straight if you're leaning forwards. Well done. Untangle the arms. Hands come to the top edge of the mat and step it back again into your downward dog. So just untangle yourself back. Good. So bring the gaze to your hands. Bend the knees. From here, you're going to come through to seated. So you can step or jump however feels good to get there. Bring yourself to the top of the mats and pop the legs out in front of you. Good. So legs out straight. Just finding a forward fold down the legs. So walking the fingers through and bowing the head towards your shins. 
just taking a couple of breaths here. And Jenny, roll yourself back up straight. So you're gonna bend the knees, so they come in towards you. Soles of the feet stay together, open the legs, so come to Baddha Kodasana. Hands holding the feet, and again, just bowing forwards and in. Keep the elbows hugging in towards the groin, so the elbows just nudge into inner thighs to keep them pressing out. And gently lifting the spine back up straight. So you're going to hold on to your peace fingers, your index finger and middle finger, are going to hook into the big toes. Keep hold of the toes, lift the knees up towards the arms. So your arms are on the inside of the legs. Tip the weight back and see if your heels can hover off the floor. So a little bit like that heel to toe pose we did at standing. You're going to reach the legs forwards. The knees at some point will slip under the arms. Try and bring the knees together as soon as you can. Good, and from there, if it feels good and you can stay balanced and lift the heels up further, it's okay if you rock back. The trick is to keep your toes really pushing into the fingers so it keeps the weight forwards. As you lift the chest up to your toes, try and pull the shoulders down your back, scoop in the abdominals. The deal is if you rock back, you have to rock yourself back into the pose again. Good, now scoop abdominals in. See if you can separate the legs, but keep them straight. So you come into a straddle pose that the chest is reaching through the heels. And still breathe. It takes some practice. Excellent, good, hold it, Judy, hold it. Nice, bring the heels back together and you come back into your Padakadasana, nearly. Heels together and folding back into the toes, softening. Well done. Lift your spine back up straight, straighten the legs out in front of you. And again, come back into your Pashamottanasana, two so legs straight, hinging over. Again, just a couple of breaths. And then bring your spine back up straight. So while your gaze is to the screen, I'm gonna show you the last um, four postures, I suppose. So we're gonna come from here onto your back with as little adjustment as you can. So you're just tipping the body, heels facing the ceiling and the arms are gonna reach back behind but not touch the floor. So we stay strong and engage through your back, belly buzz pulling down. We're gonna stay here for a few breaths. Then we drop one heel towards the floor and stay for a few breaths. And then the other heel and then no legs. Okay, so sitting up as straight as we can. If it helps your lower spine stay straight, take a little bend in the knees. So you'll feel the um, lower spine able to sit upright. Reach forwards, take a breath in, and like you're a doll being tipped backwards, see if you can lift the legs exactly as they are as you tip back. Good, nice. Let the head rest down, the arms reach up, flex the feet so legs are as straight as they can be. Now active through the arms and the hands, but hinge the arms back. So the thumbs are just hovering off the floor. Palms are facing each other. So the arms stay feeling active. Your back stays feeling active. Draw the abdominals and that lower back to the ground. Keep breathing. Keep the upper body exactly as it is. So keep that lower back against the floor. Your right leg is gonna reach forwards and down to hover above the ground to the point where your lower back can stay pulling down. So it will be hovering. Keep the lower belly pulling down and that top heel pushing up. So try and press the heels out, press the arms back still. Breathe, open the neck. Lifting the right foot up, take a breath in. Exhale, left heel lowers. Again, it hovers above the ground so that we can keep the lower belly and lower back drawing to the earth. Active through the arms, active through the legs, flex the feet. Strong, heated breath. Lift the left foot up, take a breath in, well done. Now slowly lower both heels towards the floor, come through the strength of it first, keep the arms active, try and keep the lower back to the floor, send the legs away and then flop them to the ground. 
Let the arms come down to your sides. If you want to take a twist or pop any other layers on or take any other adjustments, then feel free to, just so we come into our final pose of Shavasana. It's getting yourself settled. So moving anything, find space, softness through the body. Because if you want to, your final pose to be seated, then that's also welcome. So the Hatha Vinyasa flow that we've moved through today, Hatha meaning sun and moon. So it's this balanced energy like yin and yang. The strength and space. The heat and the cool. Just noticing areas of your body that feel heaviest against the ground. And see if you can allow them to feel a little heavier, like you're sinking into sand, hot sand. Notice the areas of your body that feel lightest from the floor. Some parts maybe even not connecting to the ground at all, the back of the knees, back of the neck, the lower spine. And let those feel even lighter and cooler. And then notice this the sense of balance that runs through the central line of the body, of the torso. And working through a slower practice, just allowing your body to breathe, to be aware, to become conscious. And then taking a couple of deeper breaths, just to bring that prana, that energy through the body again after your rest. If your legs are out flat, then bend the knees so the feet find the ground. And take a deeper breath with a sigh or a yawn. And then use a few breaths. So you bring yourself to seated in any way that feels most comfortable, most easy. Any seated posture is absolutely fine to come to. Let the arms just rest to the legs, onto the knees. And bring the hands then together at the heart center, the thumbs resting against the breastbone as we had at the start of the practice. This is your Anjali Mudra. And taking one last deep breath in, wide into the rib cage. And as you exhale, gently bowing the head to your hands, to your wonderful selves, giving yourself thanks to getting to your mat today, giving thanks to your body, to your breath, Namaste. Thank you so much for joining. Lovely to see you on Zoom. Everyone in the studio, you may now finish your self practice. <laughs> Thank you.